Okay, this week's video of the week is brought to you by SailSanCarlos.com and is all about the sperm whale rescue that we organized and executed last month, with a little help from my friends, of course. On the 12th of June, I got a phone call from Sue Frost. Sue is an old friend of mine who I affectionately like to call the Grand Dame of sport fishing in San Carlos. Now Sue asked me if I could save a female sperm whale in her calf from a gill net. It's not the kind of request you get every day, but whale entanglements happen a lot more than you might think here in the world's aquarium, the Gulf of California. Sue caught me at my shop and gave me the details and a GPS coordinate for where this entangled whale was, so how could I say no to that? Thus, I decided what the hell, I work for myself, I'm the boss, so I dropped everything I was currently doing to make one all-out effort to find this whale the very next day. Now, even with a GPS coordinate that is only 24 hours old, I still considered this to be a needle in a haystack scenario, and we would need a bit of luck to find this female sperm whale along with her calf. Now, sometimes you do just get lucky, and sometimes you make your own luck. I'm a firm believer in making your own luck, so I tried to hedge my bet by posting information on both fishing forums that there was a whale and her calf entangled in a gill net, and that anyone out fishing the next day should please keep an eye out for the whales. I also made an announcement on the VHF radio that our boat, Amistad, was out looking to rescue these whales, so if everyone would please keep their eyes peeled and call us if they spotted them. So we heard about the whale on the radio the, the day before, and then we also saw it on the San Carlos forum, which uh, we always check for fishing on where the hot spots are for fishing. And we saw that there was a whale entanglement. There would be a few boats out looking for it. And so we agreed before we went out fishing that if we heard anything, at minimum, we would relay the call and continue our, the search for, uh, for the whale ourselves. Why was it important to save that whale? Well, honestly, the fishing was fantastic next to the whale. As soon as we got there, you could see Dorado swimming all around it. But, you know, our... Uh, I guess our ambitions changed right then. We were not after the trophy fish. We knew what was the right thing to do. We needed to do whatever we could to save the whale. And uh, honestly, I've never encountered anything like that out in the ocean. I, I've seen some pictures of it. But to actually see a whale and turtles entangled in nets was unbelievable. This was not my first whale entanglement rescue in Sonora, not by a long shot. In 2003, a sperm whale and her calf are entangled in a gill net. She is named Miss Moby by her rescuers. The event was widely publicized in the LA Times and Arizona newspapers. Uh, we just saw the whale, this large object in the water, thought it was a, a boat or something, I don't know. But there was another boat circling around it, came up on the whale uh, and saw that it was two whales eventually. Uh, the baby, I don't remember, was how entangled. Uh, the mother was completely entangled head to toe, wrapped several times around the mouth. The, the net was wrapped multiple times around the tail, and its whole net was all across its body. So we cut the baby off, and then the mother, we uh, cut the body of the net away, all the way from the head to tail, had a big loop, uh, pulling the, the whole whale next to the boat eventually. First off, I dived, I swam out to the whale twice. The second time with my buddy, jumped on the back of the whale and cut away the net from on the back until I eventually cut myself. and knew that great whites are attracted to dead whales, so I gave up on that, and we started working from the boat. But how did you feel? What, what did it feel like to see that scenario? Uh, it was very emotional. Jumping up on the whale, uh, I could say I rode a whale. Uh, you could hear the whale crying. Uh, he said he was underwater and could just hear it crying for, you know, it was very sad. Uh, it had been dragging its dead baby around for a week. Uh, it was very emotional. We tried so hard, you know, and then just eventually at the end, having to let this whale go and not knowing if we'd find him the next day or not was very, very disheartening. So Brian and his crew tell one hell of a story and did one hell of a job trying to save Miss Moby. And it was my full intention of finishing up on the fantastic work that they had started. A full week later, I was still looking for Miss Moby. But what we actually came across was her husband, Mr. Moby, entangled just like his wife. My job was a piece of cake compared to Brian's nightmare. This sperm whale was so whipped he couldn't put up a fight and I cut him loose in less than five minutes. My buddy Carl Bunn shot the images. After I cut away the net, the whale was so exhausted it had no idea it was free, so I dove down and gently touched his tail. With that, the whale arched his body to look back, saw that the net was gone, we briefly exchanged glances, and he slowly swam away. It's a moment I'll never forget as long as I live.
Back to the Future, it's 2011. The story is exactly the same. Adult female sperm whale trapped in gill net, found by sport fishermen, and she is towing her calf. This time though, the calf is alive, along with two marine turtles. It was late in the afternoon, we had given up hope of finding the whales, and we were headed back home to San Carlos when we got the relay on VHF radio that the whale had been found. Upon arrival at the scene, I immediately tied off to the net so that we were now tethered to the whole mess. Watch the line, guys. Who's got the line, bud? You watching it? My good buddy Chip White then begins the task of cutting away the turtles first while I documented the event. I didn't shoot nearly as much footage as I would have liked to for the simple fact that the calf's tail was so entangled. I knew it was going to take a long, long time to cut it loose, and the sun was starting to go down. My biggest fear was that we might not finish the job before the sun set. The original plan was to cut away the baby first, then maneuver it over to the mother in hopes that it would calm her down and she would stop swimming. That was the plan anyway, and after about 15 minutes I decided it was just too difficult to cut the net and be towed around by the mother all at the same time. So I made the decision to cut the gill net as close to the tail of the mother as I could, thus liberating her and ending our little Nantucket sleigh ride. Now this made it a lot easier to work on freeing the calf and his incredibly entangled tail. We cut and cut and cut, and then we cut a little bit more. After an hour and a half of non-stop cutting, our baby is finally free, and I can tell you that the next day my arm felt like it was going to fall off. Reason being, of course, that we did not have the proper tools for this job. Using serrated dive knives like this one to cut monofilament gill nets really, really sucks, and it takes a lot of work. Luckily, the guys from Vida Rica had a small box cutter, and that did save us a lot of time. Now, as Dad always used to like to say, you got to use the right tool for the right job. So here's what I recommend you put in your toolbox, just in case you encounter an entangled whale on the high seas and decide to try to cut it loose. Okay, so here's what I now consider standard equipment in my whale rescue toolkit. Number one, blunt tip scissors. Uh, blunt tip scissors, they cannot harm the animal. They're not pointy. You can get them right next to the skin of the animal and cut, cut, cut. They're spring-loaded, very, very sharp. They'll cut through a net very quickly, thus reducing the amount of time you're in the water. Very safe to have these. Number two, box cutters. These box cutters are very, very sharp. Uh, you just have to be very careful with them. If the net is very close to the skin of the animal, it would probably be better to use the scissors. Carry some extra blades. Extra blades are good to have with your box cutter. All right, now, if you don't have any of those, the good old-fashioned serrated dive knife will work. Now, this isn't any old serrated dive knife. This is a J. Rife serrated dive knife. It's very, very sharp, the serrated part. So uh, this will work as a nice backup. Now... The other thing that I really would have liked to have had on this trip would have been a scuba tank. With this scuba tank, I could have stayed underwater, wouldn't have to worry about anything, and I could have pulled myself right up to the tail of that whale, and with my industrial scissors, I could have just chopped all of the net off of that whale very quickly and very cleanly. So that is pretty much what I recommend for your whale rescue kit. These are not isolated instances of whale entanglement. The only real thing that changes in these stories are the locations, dates, and species of the whale. The common denominator, commercial fishermen's inability to clean up their messes, and the tourism and private sector taking action to save the animals. If it were not for the many sport fishing communities and tourism operators reporting, organizing, and executing these rescues, what would happen to these animals? No one would even know these events had taken place. How many events go unreported? Now, it might be time to ask, who is responsible for policing Mexican fisheries? Who thinks ultimate respo ultimately responsible for, for cleaning up uh, the Sea of Cortez and all these long lines, all the nets? Who's ultimately responsible for that? Well, uh, you know, the movement can start up from the people, but it's the individuals in charge and power that make the laws and enforce the laws that are going to ultimately make, make or break this whole situation. This man... Ramon Corral, the head of Conapesca, is in charge of the Mexican commercial fishing industry. Now here is the problem. Mr. Corral is so busy allowing commercial fishermen to illegally fish, package, and ship Dorado to the United States, he just doesn't seem to have the time to worry about pesky gillnets.
killing whales. What that means is that we in the tourism and sport fishing sectors will continue to be forced to clean up the mess that the Department of Fisheries and Mr. Corral has left us. So you know what that means? Keep a good pair of industrial scissors in your tackle box. You're probably going to need them. And what did it feel like to, uh, to finally see that whale free? Uh, honestly, it was life-changing to me to, to see that whale free. I mean, it, it put a whole new spin. We, we come down to San Carlos for, you know, seven or eight days at a time, and, and this was absolutely the highlight of the trip. Doesn't matter what we catch afterwards, this was the highlight to be able to set such a, an amazing creature free that, you know, we, we don't get the chance to do that. Special thanks goes out to John Lehman. He's the guy with the feminine orange gloves in the middle for donating his super chingon boat, La Amistad, without which this rescue might not have been possible. And also special thanks to JD and Andre, our two little helpers who joined us on this adventurous endeavor. Also thanks to Bud Smith and Dario, our captain, and a very special thanks to Mr. Chip White for selflessly cutting away the net and not succumbing to his primal urges to spearfish one of the many Dorado that were swimming all around us the whole time we worked to free the whales. We're going to save a whale. Chip has got a spear gun to save a whale. I'm going to shoot the remoras off his back because yeah, they're itching and the Dorado that are bugging him. And then, uh, um, uh, <laughs> And last but not least, of course, very special thanks go out to the Hilliker family for spotting the whale, reporting it to us, waiting for us to arrive, and most importantly of all, giving us some cold beer after the ordeal was finally over for the long ride back to San Carlos. My name is Vince Raddus. Thanks for watching our sperm whale rescue video. If you'd like to see more videos about the Sea of Cortez or San Carlos, Mexico, and how we're trying to conserve it, please go to our website, sancarlos.tv, and our new website, worldsaquarium.com, and sign up for our newsletter. I'd also like to mention that if you're a lover of the Sea of Cortez, as I am, and would like to start a blog about this incredible body of water you see behind me, uh, go to worldsaquarium.com and simply sign up for a blog through our site. It's completely free, uh, and if you've never blogged before, I'll run you through the process. It's really quite easy. So, thanks again for watching. I'm Vince. And con el favor de Dios, we do hope to see you next week.